Ty, Annie, thank you so much for everyone that's joining us today. Thank you for those that have had the tour with Annie and I when we've had the Christmas tours. For those of you that haven't joined us, this is my homestead in Spencer, Massachusetts, just outside of Sturbridge. This is the Hillsville School, number seven, circa 1871. It was a two-room schoolhouse. Currently, my husband and I reside on one side, which is eight rooms. The other side has my shop, Primitive Times, which is six rooms. So enjoy your walk. You'll see it now decorated for the fall, decorated for the harvest, my favorite time of the year. I love the colors, the apples, the cider, the apple cider donuts, all things pumpkin. All things pumpkin. <laughs> all things pumpkin. So I hope you enjoy your walk. I hope you maybe get some decorating ideas for your own home. Feel free to call me or text me if you have any questions on anything. I answer them as quickly as I can get back to anybody. So enjoy your walk with us. <sighs> Well, we're so happy to be here. Well, thank you. I'm very happy to have all of you visit me today. And your house looks absolutely gorgeous as Thank always. you. Well, I'll give you a little heads up. In a couple of weeks, this living room, which we're now standing in, and the far end of my living room, which is my sitting room at the end of the living room, is going to have a total transformation. I have all the paint ready to go, and change is good, and it's about time that I got this color off and something different, so it'll be a whole different look. What is I this can't color? wait. This color is just a very old sage green. Mm. And I've had it on for many years and I love the color. But now that I'm retired and I have all this time that I spend in this old house, when I can't move furniture because I'm kind of limited in some of the rooms, the next thing I do is get a couple of gallons of paint and a couple of brushes and I'm off and running. Wow. So wow. In a couple of weeks, it will look entirely different. Still very cozy, still very homey, old fashioned, but a whole different look to it. I'm very excited. I can't wait to get it done. Well, let's just say it'll be very warm, primitive colors. All that you see now in sage green will take on a different look and the 1800s dry sink which is in the corner of the living room and the 1800s cupboard that's in the far corner of the sitting room will be coordinating colors that are going to blend beautifully with all the wood tone. collecting for years. Uh, some things were in the family, some things I've collected myself, a lot of very early pieces, a lot of pieces are very good reproductions, and there's nothing wrong with being able to mix both pieces. Yeah. I don't want anyone to think that if you can't afford or you can't find early pieces in your area, that means that you can't put them in your home, because if you find good reproductions, then all of a sudden you're out someday at a flea market or an antique shop, you find something you like, then you can mix them. Yes, you can mix different tastes, you can mix country, you can mix early American with the primitive. It's just a matter of, the biggest thing is to realize that primitive look is really a design. So many people think if they made something with a piece of wood, it's primitive, and it's a whole design look. Yes. Once you get that down, whether you already understand it, whether you understand it by looking at catalogs, whether you look at magazines, check Ian's YouTube videos, you'll see some great ideas on that. Uh, just realize that there's a lot of things that can go together. 
and just save your money until you can get that one special piece. You don't have to have tons of pieces. You don't have, you can do very sparse and start out whatever your design and taste is. Yeah. And just don't think you have to do it overnight. Yeah. Do it as you go along, then you're gonna get pieces you really enjoy, you really love, and you're not wasting money buying something on an impulse buy. That's right. That's and it's just warm and cozy. So those of you that already have early American or colonial, which is what I started out with for years, I transformed with some of that and ended up doing very primitive 30 years ago when I bought this house. Yeah. And I just love the coziness. But I've been in early American homes that are just as cozy and just as nice. Your home should be what you want it to be. Absolutely. That's your place to go for comfort, for security, for safety, just for the love of being there. Yeah. So have fun with it, do what you want it to be, and enjoy. Absolutely. Yeah, you'll have a good time with it. Absolutely. And especially decorate for the seasons. Yes. Fall and Christmas especially. I decorate for all the seasons, but I do more for fall and for the Christmas season. For the other seasons, I'll do touches around the house just so when I walk through rooms, I can say, oh, that's Americana. Oh, there's a few Easter eggs and a bunny. Right. But fall and Christmas are really my times of the year to decorate. I think it's because of the warmth and the cool temperatures and the, all the different gatherings and the, the friends get together and families get together and you, you seem to do more of that through the fall and holiday season than sometimes you do the rest of the year. And you just want that little festive touch within your home. go this way once. Life's too short not to have one. However you make it, just enjoy yourself. You know, I always realized all the years I've lived here, I always said I love my home and I would never have another home except an old home again. And I realized when I finally retired 10 years ago, I wasn't enjoying my home. I was passing through. And I never realized that until after I had been retired for three years. And then all of a sudden it hit me. Now you're really enjoying it. And I can enjoy now every nook and cranny. I can enjoy the painting and the remodeling and moving furniture around. Like this room that we're in now is the sitting room end of my living room. As you see, it's a very small room. Uh, it seems big because it's opened up to the living room. But when you stand in the middle, it's actually a small room. So what I did a couple of months ago was I moved all the furniture around because I am limited, moved it around, gave it a whole new look, and I absolutely love it because it's something different, but it's still warm, it's still cozy. And I had one piece of um, furniture in here that I was more decorative than anything, and I put it in the shop to sell it so someone else can enjoy it. It was the only way for me to move the room around I had to get rid of one piece and I did that and now I love the change. I had in this corner, I had a very, very early wooden wash tub, which was a big floor model. It was a gorgeous piece. I have it in the shop now and I used it to decorate for the fall. I put a Christmas tree in it with white lights. The rest of the year, I'd keep it very plain, a couple linens hanging on it. It was a gorgeous piece. It was about 1820. But I decided when I wanted to rework the room, something had to go. Right. So everything else that's in here, either I use the pieces all the time, or I actually wanted them to stay. So now someone else can enjoy the old wash tub in their laundry room, in their living room as I did. Well, it's kind of hard when you're limited because everyone says, oh, your rooms are so big. But if you, like I said, if you stand in the middle of the room and look around, they're not all that big. But because the way this house was designed, I assume by the first owner, because it was a two-year schoolhouse for years, right. whoever first purchased the house, it would make sense that he turned it into a family home. 
by making individual rooms which were not here before. There was only two rooms, this whole side and that whole side. That was it, and that was broken up by the grades yeah. in the classrooms. Yeah. So over the years, this was designed into a family home. So, but by doing that, he made enough rooms, but they are small, but I can get a lot of furniture in. I'm now, I'm into layering now. And I hear so many of my friends say that, so many customers that come into the shop will say, I'm layering, I'm stacking, and I love the look, and it enables me to bring one more thing into my house. <laughs> There's my little buttery that everyone loves. That was my junk closet for years. And all of a sudden, I had this brainstorm. I'm going to make a buttery. So I had a friend come over. I took the doors off. He built that in for me with old wood. And I love it. I change it out. Um, I think probably for the winter, I'm going to take a lot of things out of there. I'm going to make it very sparse just to give it a different look but it just finishes off this end of the room beautifully. I am so happy doing that. And it also shows a lot of people that have come through the house, people think to make a buttery, you need a big room. You don't, you need just one little closet. And I can't tell you the girls that have either seen this on the videos or have come into the shop or come into the house and have sent me pictures, they've gone home. Their husband has gone to work, they took the door off the closet. The husband came home, the door was out on the front lawn. He has no idea what has happened. <laughs> Kind of afraid to walk in the house, but he figures he better go in anyway. <laughs> well, it's been repainted while he's been at work. They're getting ready to set it up. Mm -hmm. So you don't need a whole big room. One little area suffices, and that's perfect. And people had this mindset, you need a whole room. Right. Or you needed a root cellar area, which is underground in the house to keep everything cold. Right. Well, if you have an old home that has that design, that's perfect. If you don't, this is the next best thing. It's so perfect. It, it, I, it's one of the best things I think I've ever done to this house. I am Every time I walk by here, I am so happy that I, I decided to do that. Bit the bullet, and like I say, now for the winter, I'm going to take a lot out of there. Really make it sparse, just to give it a different look. I love this room. My husband made all the cupboard doors for me. My best friend came over and did all the aging for me. My husband and a friend of ours uh, made the wood countertops for me. He made uh, my pantry, which is right here. Uh, he does some beautiful woodworking. He makes furniture, he makes smalls for the shop. So he really enjoyed doing all this. And he wanted a very simple, basic look to the cupboards. He wanted just a flat look. He didn't want any handles on it, nothing. And he achieved it. I absolutely love it. And I painted it the uh, pumpkin from the Benjamin Moore historic line. And it's one of my favorite colors. I think for the rest of my life, I will always have a room in my house that has the pumpkin color in it. It's warm, it's inviting, it goes with everything. And in having the pumpkin color both in here and the dining room, which adjoins the kitchen, I realized over the past few years once the early blue colors started coming back out into the marketplace again, maybe about four or five years ago, that the early blue colors are just breathtaking with pumpkin. So I've incorporated a little bit of the old blues here and there when I find the pieces, and I just love it. But it's just such a warm, inviting color. Also, the key to this is when you get your colors, mix a little bit of black with it. You have to experiment with it and fool around with it, but if you mix little bits of black, and I don't have any rhyme or reason with you exactly how much to mix, but I, I just fool around with it. The black darkens it just enough that it gives it more of a warmth more of a very old-fashioned, cozy color. And the colors themselves are beautiful because they're, I only work with paint that's out of historic lines. But just mixing the blacks with it can make such a huge difference. So if you're just doing a small room, just take, some of the, take a gallon of that paint, pour some into a quart container. Just mix a tablespoon at a time. Write down 
is you're doing it. So when you get to the point that you know what you like, you or you can look down and say, oh, yeah, okay, that's eight tablespoons, not, oh my God, how many have I put in? I forgot already. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> I've done that. But that's key. Any of the historic colors makes black little bits at a time, and it'll just darken it enough that it's just amazing. This is an old butter worker that Ridge bought for me as a gift years ago, and we always had it on our dining room table as a centerpiece, and then we decided we wanted to do something different with it, so he said, why don't we have a base made for it? So one of the men that was making furniture for me for the shop made the base to put it on, and I absolutely love it because it's a whole different look now. Oh, it's brilliant. Isn't it different? It's so different. Yeah, it's nice. It. And it's one of those pieces, even though it's a butter worker, that yeah. can go in any room of your house. Sure. You set up your decorative pieces on it depending on what room it's in. I mean, that could work in a bedroom if your bedroom was large enough. Right. You could fold quilts on it. You could fold linen on it, your stacking boxes, whatever you wanted because it's now in a bedroom. That's another thing people think because it's a bowl or it's a butter worker. That means kitchen, dining room. Right. Oh, I have bowls in my bathroom, girls. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> you put it where you want it to go in your house. The key is to decorate it according to the room that it's in. Good. Wow. That's the simple, simple key. That's a great. Even if it's a simple bowl, either keep it plain or like the one in my bathroom, it's got old soaps in it. Okay. I have another big one I put in the bathroom that I folded linens in, wow. towels. Just do it according to the room that it's in. So just don't, that way you're not as limited. And when you get to the point that you want to rechange things, but you don't want to get rid of things you have because you love them, that's what you do. You take something from point A, move it to point B, yeah. and you're good. Wow. And you're doing it in many times with things you already have in your house. So you haven't had to go out to antique stores, right. either spend a lot of money or not even find things. Right. You're using everything you absolutely love. That's and it can go anywhere. Saver. Yep, exactly. It's a big money saver. This is the dining room, or it's the colonials called it, the eatery. And years ago, I've told girls this before in our, our Christmas walks, this when I first bought the house, I set this up as a keeping room. And a keeping room traditionally has a fireplace. My fireplace is a full fireplace, but the word fireplace is still there. So I set this up as a keeping room. The dining room was always the sitting part of the living room that we were just walking through. I never liked it. I sat to have every meal, I felt cramped. Not once did I ever think to switch the rooms. So my husband retired before I did. On a Saturday night at nine o'clock, he said, do you want to switch the dining room and the sitting room? And I'm thinking, nine o'clock Saturday night, he wants to move furniture. I'm jumping on this one, so I did. I let him go with it. I thought, what's the worst I can, I don't like it, I'll move it around. Right. So I zipped my mouth shut, right. which sometimes is hard to do, but I did it. <laughs> I let him move everything around and I loved it. Fell in love with it. We worked till one o'clock in the morning. I tweaked it the next morning when I got up. This is the way it has stayed now for, my God, well, I've been retired 10 years, so it's been like this at least nine years. The only thing that I change out is my centerpiece on my table because the table's so long, I need something big. So I have two or three different big items that I'll put out as my centerpiece. I changed the stuffed chairs, which I just recently did. Yep. That was in my living room. Yep. I liked it here because yep. it's got the piece, the little arm where I can put the tankard. Oh, yes. 
I thought that was appropriate in a dining room. So I moved, it gave me a chance to move two chairs around in the living room, make that room look different. This looks a little different because it has this chair in it. And then every once in a while, I'll just take these two chairs right here at the dining room table. Yeah. Now I just put them this way. Sometimes I'll just angle them like this, but something that simple changes the whole look when you walk into the room. Wow. That's all it takes. So I've had it this way for a while, so now it's like, okay, we're doing this for a while. Wow. And this, these are my um, newest addition to the shop. These are Americana vintage candles. And for gals that are not aware of these, this is one of the best candles on the market. I sold them for years and lost contact with the owner, and it took me two years to track her down. I just got my first number of cases in two weeks ago and have been selling them like crazy. I sold two cases in two days. Oh my goodness. They're phenomenal because they're rolled, they're all hand done, they're rolled in fresh herbs and drieds. They're 155 hours of burn time. They burn into a well, so there is no mess, and the scent is just awesome. It is awesome. Isn't it nice? And they smell good when they're not burning. You open it up, walk into your room. Girls that have purchased them have said, I haven't burned mine yet, and my kitchen smells wonderful. Wow. Yeah. So they're called what? They're called, the company is called Americana Vintage. Uh-huh. And you have a whole bunch that you can sell. I have a whole Should, bunch. But they're I have, selling fast. <laughs> they're selling fast, but I have about six more cases coming in in two or three weeks with uh, replacements for what is already sold. Yeah. Some are her new scents, her Christmas scents. They're just awesome candles. Then when I close the shop for the winter, reopen again in April, I'll have all of her spring and summer scents. Fresh herbs, lemon custard, lemon curd, orange spice, just typical spring summer scents yeah. but they can also be year-round sure. I just like some of those scents in spring going to the summer yeah. this happens to be gingerbread which I thought it, it, you know she has pumpkin scents but I've had this one in here and I like burning this one year-round they're just wonderful Smells candles so good. isn't it good yes. yeah really yes. really nice that piece that you're looking at now my brother gave me that's a corn shucker. He had, the, he had a very early Victorian home in Connecticut for years, which he sold a year and a half ago. And he had that in his garage for years. And he, it, his taste in, was a little more decorative in the antiques than mine was. So he brought it up to me as a gift one day. That's what I mean about the early blue mixing beautifully. Right. I don't know if you can see it as well. Oh, there we go. It's beautiful up against the pumpkin, so I've tried to incorporate a little bit of the early blues into my dining room and into my living room with the pumpkin colors when I find it because they're just warm and cozy. I also do the same thing with the old-fashioned blue pumpkins for decorating for the fall. The first year I did it in the shop, girls looked at me and said, Karen, you're putting a blue pumpkin out. I said, watch me. I took blue, I took the pumpkin color, and I took a very old age linen color, and I put them all together in a wooden bowl on the counter, and they went, oh my God, I'm going to get those. They were right over. And every year they sell, it's just a really nice combination. Yeah. This turned out to be, I have a, I love every room in my home, but when my husband redid this room, I, if the flow was better, I, I feel like I have more room when I sit here to have dinner during COVID. We had uh, two sets of friends over for Thanksgiving dinner. We all sat in here and enjoyed Thanksgiving dinner together. We wouldn't have had as much room had it stayed where it always was, but all the years I was working, like that's what I mean about just passing through my home and not enjoying it. Yeah. Not only wasn't I enjoying it, but it never dawned on me, I could have moved the rooms around. Sure. And yeah. something that just took us a couple of hours. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And even though this fireplace is artificial, it still gives the effect right. of the fireplace, so you get the feeling of it. Right. And tell me about this table. This is a table that was made for me years ago. This barn board now on the top is close to probably 150, 180 years old. The bottom was made to look new, okay. and the bottom uh, there's a there's a 
what I use for linens on the linen drawer. And then I don't put a lot under there because you don't see a lot when the chairs are there. Yeah. So I decided to just the lighter color linen and the dark color, but a big bowl which pops off the light linen. Yeah. That you notice down there. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not a piece that I decorate because you just don't see it. Right. One year I put a few crocs under there, but then I thought, I don't even notice these. How is anyone else going to enjoy them? So I did just that, and it's, it's just enough under there. And this is perfect for all of my linens in that drawer. That's really nice. Until the mice realized they're in there, which I found one year. Oh. I took them out for Christmas, and the mouse had, mice had gotten in there. Nice. But nice. the joys of an old home. I know it. I know it. You have to just go with the flow. I but know. mice are going to get into new homes, too, so well, not much you can do about are. it. Especially if you're a country person, right? Exactly, yep. yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is another much. piece. My husband made this settle bench with a drop-down desk. That was a Valentine gift one year. Yeah, that's beautiful. And he made that for me as a gift, and I love that piece. I love it, too. No one can sit on it, because I always have it decorated. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. But if I really needed it, if someone had children or something here, I could just remove things, and it's another yeah. seat for somebody. Yeah. But it's so different. I've never seen a piece like it anywhere. And, and I'm, I'm always looking at magazines. I'm out picking and antiquing for the shop all the time, and I've never seen anything like it. I, I really like that piece. That's beautiful. And there, yeah, it's, it's very different. Well, I've always loved decorating since I was a little girl. I remember my sister and I shared a room growing up, and I was always the neat freak. So I was always the one tidying everything up and keeping the room decorated. And then we'd get to my sister's side. And when she wasn't around or she wasn't looking, I kind of straightened out her side too. <laughs> but I love doing this. I get so much pleasure out of decorating. And it's nothing for me to come into a room with a tote, take everything down and just move it into another room. But it's a chance for me to totally change a room and I don't have to go shopping. That's true. And when you're home all the time and when you're not going out to work like I am now with retirement, right. you literally get sick of looking at everything the same, no matter how much you love it. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, you just have to change it up. Exactly, and changing up to me can mean packing a lot of things away for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I've done that before too. And that will give the room a whole different look because everything will just be very simple, very yes. sparse, which yes. I'm, I'd like to try to do that after the holidays issue when I put Christmas decorations okay. away. Yeah. Usually I do that and after about two or three months I've found other things to take the place of those that are packed away. Uh -huh. yeah. So it doesn't always work well for me. <laughs> we'll see. I keep telling my husband, I said, I have to get myself into this downsizing mode so when we finally get to that point, I'm going to be able to do it right. and not go through withdrawals. Right. That's true. Yeah, at least you can sell stuff in your store. Exactly. Sell and it's stuff. usually stuff when I put it over there, it's one of a kind. Yeah. Some of the things I've had, you know, 40, 50 years. Yeah. So it's something that somebody hasn't seen before. So I do have an avenue for someone else to purchase it and someone else to enjoy it. Right. So I'm going to try that when I pack Christmas things away this year. I'm going to try. I did it upstairs two years ago. I have a hallway upstairs. It's very small and very narrow. And I had uh, things all over the walls. I had peg rack with all kinds of oil, four things deep hanging on it. I loved it. Yeah. Um, I had all kinds of pictures on the other wall, hand stitch pieces. And all of a sudden I said, this is too much. Yeah. I took almost everything down. It took me a few months to get used to it, but I loved it. I did the same thing in the master bedroom. I have that set up just like a little house on the prairie bedroom. But again, the peg racks, two or three things layered deep. I took 13 things out one day. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's simplified. Mm -hmm. I still like it. So I think if I can maybe get myself, and we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I keep saying I can do this. I know I can. I know I can. Like the little train that could. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I right. think I can. I think yeah. I can. Well, we'll yeah. see. <laughs> I'll give it my best shot. What can I tell you? <laughs> Love it. Okay, guys, well, we've just looked at the, the uh, at Karen's home, and we're going to go over to the store now. Okay. Uh, yes. Come on over. Come 